thanks for coming. It's really nice to have you here. I study what, 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 what are you studying? I'm studying translation and interpreting, but I am really hoping to go into human rights law. So we will see. Oh, I, right. Okay, good. We'll see. But I was so, it was really interesting. So, okay, this is not really about what's going on in Boazichip, but it's a good opportunity maybe to ask you. So you said that the human, so, the, so you said that the convention on human, it's not really like the other laws. Is that no. just... Is that just the case with all conventions or is there really something special about the Convention on Human Rights? I would say all human rights conventions. Yeah, but so the, 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 the reason why we have uh, two covenants, they're called, at the United Nations level, is again a lot to do with the history and the Cold War in particular. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that um, human rights are definitely law mm -hmm. if your country has signed up to them. You know, and you can go to court and you can try to get a good result, uh, maybe some damages, maybe the law change. But I think it is very, very different from ordinary national domestic law. And in particular, because it has its roots in these big historical events. Mm. And really, it didn't start until the American and French revolutions. Mm. Nobody was talking about human rights or rights of man even before then. As I said, women... I'm really sorry to say, have not had any rights until fairly recently. And the rights of people who were turned into slaves by Britain and in America, as you know, that is still a, such a big issue. And so at my university, we have uh, Black Lives Matter. And I have a, a number of uh, black and brown skinned colleagues at the university. And they would say that the, these kind of issues are not resolved at all. Mm. In particular, compensation for slavery. And Britain made so much money from the slave trade, you know, back in the 17th and 18th centuries and into the 19th. So it's not, uh, you know, not finished by any means. And by the way, I saw that I do work on, also on international criminal justice. And that's the International Criminal Court which quite a few countries have not signed up to. And that's war crimes. And people are getting prosecuted now. And so that's the course I'm teaching this term. But now there's a move to have a new crime called ecocide. And that is deliberately ruining the environment in which we have to live. So, you know, I think there's things that we can also try to move forward in that kind of way also, I think. Yeah. And then so I, I really, I really, you know, it's great. If you want to be a lawyer and you want to do human rights, excellent, very, very good. But don't think the world will change as a result, it won't. <laughs> but I think there are useful things we can do. Yeah, yeah. And then just another quick question. Uh, it, so you said that in a way, the European Convention of Human Rights, it's kind of like 18th century. It is, when you look at it, compare the two, nearly word for word. <laughs> Yeah, but like what kind of updates do you see necessary or yeah, like what are some things that you think would be necessary to do to bring it up to date? Well, I say the European Social Charter, which Britain refuses to have anything to do with, I think that's really important, by the way, because that's recognizing uh, social and economic rights, you know, rights of people at work, uh, cases brought by trade unions in particular, um, so countries like France and Italy and Spain and Greece have signed up to that. And I think that's really helping to bring uh, human rights into the modern world. I think that 18th century rights are really important and we don't want to be tortured. And we do want to have fair elections and we do want to have freedom of speech. So I think they're still you know, pretty important rights.